Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. I didn't expect so many people to be here, but I can leave. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> so uh, we start with the me slide, as usual. So I'm uh, Damien Krotkin. My nickname is Dams. I'm from Paris. Um, so I'm a member of uh, Paris.pm. And I do participate to the, the, the French uh, manga stuff. And I actually, I actually uh, did quite a few stuff, like organ uh, organizing uh, technical meetings and so on, up to the point where I was elected uh, vice president. And then I did nothing anymore. <laughs> and uh, I'm also a per dancer uh, developer. That's why I'm here, basically. I have only 11 modules on CPAN, so that's pretty, pretty weak. But I wrote uh, a book in French, which is called Modern Pearl, which means modern pearl. <laughs> I think oh, something like that. Please go buy it so I get richer. Uh, so that's, that's about it. Um, I'm here. To, I was thinking, well, OK, yeah, yep, see you. I should just go and do a talk about Dancer because, yeah, I know a little bit about it. And uh, the thing is, that I'm sure you've heard about it. It's simple, it's powerful, it's flexible. So Pearl Dancer, the web framework, who hasn't, who, who doesn't know anything about Dancer in this room? Ah, quite a few, okay. And maybe this talk is not entirely for you, I don't know. No, I think it is. So this talk is just not a hello world. Because uh, there are so many uh, hello world about, uh, there are so many talks about, yeah, Dancer, uh, it's cool, okay, here is, I've heard that in, uh, in uh, YAPC NA there were one talk, the entire talk was about how to install Perl up to the point where Dancer is installed. <laughs> so talk about the hello world talk. And uh, there are a few talks about uh, how to get started, uh, how to uh, display something, and I really wanted to uh, not do that, but just uh, talk about uh, one experience I had at work, and so that you see what I used and the technology I used. And also, it's interesting because it's an unusual web application, uh, which uses a technology that you are not going to use to build a blog or something like that. And the goal is to show you how uh, easy and flexible Dancer is or might be. So let's start with the background. So where does this all come from? It's a nice animation. So at my company, fully inject uh, our dependencies slowly and be able to run all our test suite and make sure that uh, all our product works and then inject it in the uh, mirror. So that's all it is about. Uh, we have... Uh, common interface to inject module in our local mirror, and uh, we actually wanted a web interface to do that. So it's very simple. Let's see the process. So the process in injecting module in the mirror. So what we have is a mirror which uh, were created with uh, mini CPAN and managed by uh, CPAN mini. And uh, injecting a module in uh, in uh, the local mirror, it's just about calling uh, inject. And you only specify the mirror's uh, config file, and it works great. Um, so what we can see is that it's single-threaded. Um, what I mean is that either you inject a module in the local mirror, or you don't. You know, it's not like uh, a web application with thousands of users trying to do stuff. So it's very uh, single job oriented. And uh, we do it one mirror at a time. I'm only going to show um, uh, with one mirror, but we actually have more than one mirror. And uh, one injection at a time, and only one command to perform. So that means that we have actually no user. There, there won't be uh, any uh, difference between one user and another using the web application to inject in the local mirror. Like, could be some authentication or privileges, but uh, there is no fundam fundamental concept of user in the web app. 
There is no database as well. I mean, all the data is either the local uh, uh, CPAN mirror content or the config file, but there is no such thing as a database. There is no session as well. It's really, uh, the web application is really a mirror of what's happening when injecting the, uh, the module. But we have a forking process, which, because of course we are going to build the web interface uh, with a button, which will be injecting the mirror. And when you click on this button, we will fire somehow a, uh, a process which we'll call mini SEPAN inject and which will do the job and that will be a backroom process. So now the web interface. Uh, everything is on a single page. Um, basically, we need uh, an input to uh, input the string and check it. And we, uh, what I added in the, in the background process is a way to check if the string is actually a CPAN module or if it's uh, nothing. And uh, check if there is a, a newer version compared to the one we have in our local mirror. If that's the case, then you can uh, confirm the injection or you can cancel. So basically it's a three status uh, interface where first of all you schedule something and then uh, if that's okay and if uh, you can double check the dependencies injection, if that's okay, then you can confirm the injection in the mirror. And that produces logs and we want to see the log on the interface. So that's the wireframe. Uh, in the, of the web interface. So basically, a status, an input text, three buttons to schedule, confirm, or cancel, and here are the logs of what's happening. And uh, if, you this, if you close your browser, you come back, it should continue to, sh and, and if an injection is uh, occurring, it should continue to show you what's, what's going on, what the logs are uh, doing, and so on. So what are the technologies I decided to use. Uh, basically, we need, uh, what I wanted is that, uh, you know, I want instantaneous update of the logs. Uh, so I don't need to uh, reload or do stuff like that. So to do that, I use the web sockets. Uh, also, I want every user to see the same thing because there is only one thing happening at one point in time which is the injection in the mirror. So I don't want two people connecting to web interface to see two different things. Uh, and I want, uh, we will need information about the module. So I use, uh, I don't remember what I used to get all the information about the local mirror, but uh, when you input a string, I check on the, uh, on the CPAN using meta, meta CPAN API that there is actually a new version and that it's a legit uh, module name. And uh, we will choose even programming for the, to be able to run the injection process in the background and also so that uh, there is only one central uh, state of the web application. So if you don't know what Dancer is, it's a web framework. So I tried to do it in one sentence, but it's not easy. Uh, Dancer allows you to easily create web applications where you can associate HTTP routes to code, which usually end up sending back da data via a template engine, right? Okay, so basically, um, you, what we do is we start creating a new application with Dancer minus A and the name of our application. And we have to uh, choose a template system. How it works is, uh, so that's the default, but you can work uh, around that. Basically, uh, it comes with a, a concept of a layout, which will be the static stuff on your, all your, your web pages. And in this layout, there is the content uh, tag here, placeholders. And then you have template views, which will replace the content in your uh, layout. Let's talk about WebSockets. Uh, it's a bi-directional web communication uh, standard which, which has some issues for now, security issues and stuff like that. So it's implemented in Chrome, but potentially with a security issue. Firefox has uh, their own implementation, but eventually it's going to be the standard, I guess, for uh, 
two-direction web communication. Uh, so the server can push to the client. We will use a Tensor plugin WebSocket, which uses WebHP, which is the implementation of WebSocket and also Comet, which is another uh, standard, um, using uh, any event. So that's what uh, WebHP uh, uses, and any event is an event programming uh, module. So we will need to use a web server uh, which uh, is built up upon any event, and that's called Twiggy. So basically, we know that we will have to run this web application using Twiggy. Yeah, any event, there is a very good talk about, I mean, very good, I don't know, but there is a talk which is happening tomorrow, done by Sawyer X, uh, about event programming. It will be 40 minutes. It will be probably great. The issue is that it's at the same time of one of another talk I'm doing tomorrow, so you have to choose. Uh, go to mine, obviously. Uh, but anyway, any event brings back the concept of single-threaded cooperative multitasking, the stuff that we all liked in Windows 3.1, I think. But it's okay if you are doing all the job in your program. So it actually works when you are master of all what's running into this uh, single thread cooperative multitasking. Uh, you have tasks, uh, events, and um, basically a main loop, which is not blocking, waiting for events and deciding what to do, um, depending on which events it receives, and so on. So Twiggy is an event, an any event based web server. We're going to use that. So here is a nice diagram. So basically we have our um, server, web server process here, server side. Uh, at some point when the user decides to uh, inject something into our local uh, CPAN mirror, it will fire this fork process, but gathering all the standard outputs, okay? Using any event, it's very easy to do. And then this standard output is sent to the client using a uh, WebSocket. And the client with JavaScript will just update the uh, logs here in, a, in frame. And it will also update the status because basically this process, it knows when it starts and when it uh, finishes and also when it fails. And so in the, I, I made this process output in the standard output uh, special lines that are detected uh, here and here to uh, change the status of what's happening. Show me the interface. So that's the interface. It's, it's ugly, but it kind of works. So here we have the status, either. Uh, we have the input text here. Uh, okay, in in my version, I can choose between two different mirrors. And then the three button, you input your text, you click on schedule, and then it will uh, look, it takes some time, but it looks like at the local mirror and compares it with uh, Meta CPAN uh, using the API and tells you if that's a legit module, what are the dependencies, and so on. If you like what you see, you click on confirm, otherwise you click on consent. Yeah, that's another snapshot, blah, blah, blah. I've entered auto die. And it displayed a lot of stuff. And uh, if you agree, just click on Confirm. So let's, OK, I have five minutes to show you the code. So that's going to be, yeah. Anyway, you start with Denso minus A, my awesome application. And then it will create it for you. But that's basically what it is. It will create a .pl file, which uses Denso, use uh, Perl module, and then Dance. That's very easy. We don't touch the config.yaml that comes with the default uh, Dancer application, except for the template engine, which switch it to a uh, template toolkit. So that's in config.yaml. And here is the layout, who I have actually stripped, stripped it down to nothing, except loading jQuery and uh, displaying the content of the template views. How you launch that? You launch it. Uh, with Twiggy using Placup, giving your uh, .pl and the port number. 
Now let's have a look at the easy stuff. So that's the index.tt, so that is the main view, uh, basically the, the page where you, you will arrive when you load the application. Uh, views slash index.tt, uh, we have a status there, and that's the placeholders that will receive the status from the server. Also, it has an ID so that it can be updated by JavaScript. Uh, then we have a form, of course, with the three input types, okay, the text and the tree button, right? And the text is module name, and then we have the buttons called schedule, confirm, and cancel. Nothing fancy except that here the page can actually receive a module name if it has already uh, been filled in and you've reloaded the page. And then we have the logs. It's a div, you know, it's, with a fancy uh, uh, CSS. And here it will receive the, the static log string. Then we need some JavaScript. Some JavaScript first to set up the WebSocket. So WebSocket, you do it like that. At least it works in Chrome. So you create the WebSocket object. You need to give it the host, the server uh, address, the port. And that's because we are using HIP to, to connect. So somehow we need to retrieve the server uh, address and the port. And the JavaScript cannot invent that. So it will receive it from the, the server via the template functions, uh, placeholders, sorry. And here we have the two methods. One is triggered when we receive something from the WebSocket, which is very simple. We receive data. We uh, parse it because we receive JSON uh, data. And if there is actual data, we append it to injection log span, OK? So that's very easy to do. And that's the other. Uh, communication uh, method to send stuff to the server. Okay, there is something to it. Uh, this is, instead of just appending the data into the log, here we have some regex to change that the status changed, okay? That the forked process sends the, the status changed. And here we have the Perl module, so there is only one module, one file. It's called my mirror injector. So we use Dancer, a flash message plugin, and the WebSocket, and any event util that's to be able to run the process in, in, uh, in background. And what we have here are variables, which are global, actually. But that's OK, because we're running with Twiggy, and so based on any event, so there is only one thread. So there is only one status and one log and one module name at a given point in time. So that's why we can actually use uh, these variables here. One minute left. Thank you. And then uh, here we have a very simple uh, get slash uh, root, which displays the index template, so what we have seen before, passing by the server address and port. That's the important thing. And when we post something, we check if it was the confirm schedule or cancel button. And depending on that, what we do is we launch the command, OK, to inject into our mirror, either with dry run if we are scheduling, or uh, without dry run, so I've not repeated, but that's the same line, if we really want to uh, inject into the mirror. And if you cancel, then we reset the status back to zero. And yeah, sorry. Yeah, and that's the launch command. So when the guy clicked on confirm, we uh, use the run command from any event. So we are doing that. And we are saying that we are gathering all the output content. And here we are sending it with wsend on the server side to the client. There were a video I did, but I don't think I have time to show it. It's two minutes. Sorry.